Hi guys, Marcus here. Today we have a new Nintendo 3DS XL and you know what? It is not faulty. What? And it's not from Mime. Huh? It's just mine. <laughs> but we have this, yeah, a nice port and we would need to get this in our bag if we want to charge this little thing. And I don't think that this is a good thing. We want, of course, a USB-C port in this. That means we need to get rid of this and we need to modify our case to fit in a USB-C port. And I don't want to use a complete mod board and just have laying around some USB-C ports. I will have a look which one could fit best. Then I need a way to put it in here nicely without too much hot glue. <laughs> Hopefully no glue at all, but I think that's just a dream. And maybe design a little 3D printable board to mount this thing. I don't know. I, I think we will have a look and see how it's working. Okay, here we have a ribbon cable. And another one. And here we have our little connector. Let's put our original charger in. So voltage measuring. Something. Five volts. Yeah, okay, so this is our positive and that is our ground. Okay, what is this? Okay, that's all ground. And that's plus? No. We have multiple points to put in some voltage here. Good. So, but just for the records, let me show you the device is working. Put this in here. See the blue light and you see the console of modified firmware. You can see it's, it's turning on. Yeah, then let's get rid of the main board. Let me have a quick glance how to disconnect those connectors doesn't seem to be of oh maybe a pair of post processing markers here in retrospect i would not recommend to bend those connectors upwards for the ribbon cable removal i think those are designed to have a slightly springiness to guarantee a good connection so just try to remove them without any bending at all that's a strange connector isn't it There's no locking mechanism, it's just holding down with the yeah metal connections here. Okay. It's a strange approach. Okay, a ribbon cable from from the back side. Ooh. Okay. That, oh, wow. How many ribbon cables are in this little space here? How about this SD connector? Yeah, I think we should remove it also. We don't want to put it on unnecessary heat, don't we? Good, good, good. Let me fast verify which was which. So left side is ground and right side was positive. Maybe I can, I can mark it a bit. Yes. And what we also have is a little indicator for liquid damage. Let me 
Let's see if I can remove it and we can put it on later. Or not. Now let's do a continuity test to see what else is positive or negative from this connector outgoing. So that's positive. So this is also positive. So that means that this is negative and this is negative. Good. And this is negative. So this, this, and this. Let's desolder this puppy. Take a nap. Take a zip. Take a nap. Okay, I would take a nap, but not yet. So what I would like to do is use some low mile solder and put it all around here hopefully to get this port out without too much effort so let's do that you see the low mile solder is really helpful will help us lowering the temperature to desolder the port in a second. And what we of course have missed is flux. That was of course a big shame. What did we fix? Mmm, flux. Yeah, much better. The flux helps not to need any more low mass solar. Cause now it's much better to work in those joints. And you can see it's still liquid. Good. Yielding hot air. Yeah, let's go with 400 degrees. Look how easy it is. To clean up the holes with the low mount solar. That's really a beauty about using this stuff. So, I think that looks good. Let's clean up this side too. Yeah, we are just losing our previously marked solder joint. Well, that's not, not a problem. I will do it again in a moment. Yeah, I think the, the rest is, is clear so far. I mean, those here are just uh, anchoring points. So that's ground, obviously. That's positive and that's negative. So I could use those or those or all of them. Which one? All of them. So I have some variations of USB-C ports laying around, which will fit best. Okay, here we have just two anchor points. I think that's not good. But what is here? Yeah, that looks even better. Now well, that's a little bit hard to bend these. Now let's try. I think it could work. First of all, we need to know which pins are plus or positive and ground and which can I get rid of? All the data connection, obviously. Here are other connections. I need to isolate this, so I probably put some solar mask 
on those points here and just use this for ground and this for positive plus 5 volts. I think that's the smartest thing I can do or if I'm just very lucky and one of those overlapping pins are round or positive and it would fit, obviously I would go with this. And to know this is to use yeah a breakout board for USB-C. You know what, let's do it like this. So that's the same orientation that our board would lay on. So let's check which connections we can use. I go into continuity mode, we hear the beep. Ground is not our main problem, we can use just the anchor points for this I assume. What we do need is VCC, that's over here. Where is VCC? Okay, this VCC, but we have luckily multiple VCC. I think there must be one for the outer row. At least I hope so. You know, that's unfortunately also a little hidden thing. Yeah, that makes it tedious, of course. This means one, two, three, four, five. So this over here is the pin I need to put some wiring in. Okay, what I have here is a 0.4 millimeter thick wire where we need to get the um, isolation down a bit so that it will stick. Oops, and I get into my blue mat. Some solar on. Okay, this one over here. Perfect. Okay, I think it's on. Okay, what I would try now is to cut this here somewhere. Oops. Damn it! Yeah, and I just ripped it apart. Okay, it seems to be on. It is at the moment fragile, of course, but that's not the problem. So what I've just have done is scrape from this side a bit. We've connected it here and if we probe here. You hear it beeping. So we do have continuity. And now it's of course fragile. Let me try to fix or to glue it down. Not sure how, but I hope that I find a way. First of all, let's try to clean it up. So what I do want to try out is to use some UV glue. That's UV glue. In Germany it's UV Kleber. Let's try to harden it. I think that's better than than solar mask, but never tried this before. So I think it's a good idea to put it under some drops in here. And from this little cap, with the help of what could we take? Yeah, let's use a dental pick again. Some drops of the UV glue. Why not? Let's put it on all of the contacts. Let's prevent shorts. Okay, I 
think that's plenty of glue. Of course, take a dip of my muck. Mm. Ah. Then we use our UV lamp. So this UV lamp outputs 10 watts and will shut off after 20 seconds, something around this, this area. So let's harden it. Let's have a look if it's already hardened enough. Yeah, it is hardened, but not enough. So let's do a second round. Okay, second power's done. Not quite sure. I think that's too flimsy. Let me get some more on it. Yeah, getting better. And another run. Short boost for there. And we are good to go. It's a bit gummy, so it's wiggling around, so it's not rock hard or something. Not sure if that's a good thing or not. But anyway, what I would like to do now is get this thing out. Disconnect our board. Now we need to test it. And we do have five volts. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's mask those contacts. I'm not feeling good with those in this place. We don't need them. So let's clean this up. And let me put some solar mask on those points. Yeah, that looks good. So let's see. I think we need to position the port that we are happy with it. So the only thing I don't want is that the port is angled downwards. So it needs to be flush. So I will try to hold it with my bare hands and solder it. Yeah, it looks good to me. Now I can put it back in the board holder. And of course, it's not 100% the way I would like it to be. Yeah. Okay, let's now connect. Well, let's route the wire. Maybe. Correct. Bird. He has a very beefy wire. 0.4. It's that is not thin. A thinner wire would be easier to handle. So if you want to try that out by yourself, I would recommend to use a slightly thinner jumper wire instead. But don't go too thin, because the wire needs to transport at least a bit of current for charging the console. And I think it's maybe a too thick, or it's at least makes it more difficult to work with it. But I just thought I we would like to charge our combo with this wire so we should try to get a bigger gauge okay i mean theoretically we should measure when we plug it in five point three volts that looks good and Let's see, okay, just cut it here. Screw 
brave some isolation away. Hopefully that's enough. Just clean up stuff. Could make some flux. Good. Solid. It looks too shady. Oh, a new subscriber! Speaking of new subscribers, um, if you would like... No, just kidding. You know what you can do. <laughs> but it would be very appreciated, of course. Okay, so that is perfectly fine. Nice. Okay, now I'm wondering, do I need to connect ground? I don't think so because we already have ground here. Let's check if it's if it was the same. So meter in continuity and ground here and ground here. Yeah, that's the same. Okay. Okay, we are at least drawing something. That's of course very low. So the only thing left is that the port, you can see it's slightly angled, I think, but it's not much. So I'm not sure if I should bother or not, probably not. Yeah, I think I can live with this. So let me see if I can put it together. Okay, hopefully that's all more or less good together. Yeah, and here we see that we need to get our groove bigger, or need to grind up the um, yeah connector a bit, so that it would fit. So, but the only thing I'm interested in is will it boot up? Okay, blue light at least. Yeah, okay, at least we have something. Yeah, that's not pretty, but my idea is to print a little bezel to hide this dodgy work here. Yeah, that was bad. This grinding grinding tool was too um too coarse. Okay, I think that's enough for testing. Let's put in the battery. Let's put it in. And see what it's doing. And it will not. Charging. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that worked out perfect. So the only thing I have to do is to neaten up the, the case. Yeah. Very nice. The next step to hide the case mess was to refine the case with the file, took a picture from the port, put it into my CAD software of choice and modeled something useful and I was happy with. After this I printed out the design bezel with the help of my 3D printer. The first version you saw me designing was this one here, but it's not that nice, so the finish is not good. So I can show you what it looks like, so those prongs here will slide into those holes here, and theoretically it would fit. But there, there are some more problems, as you can see. It's not flush because I, um, well, the print was done and I removed it too early from the build plate. That means that the uh, material is still hot and if you have some thin layers like this here, that's just one millimeter, um, while you are peeling it from the build plate, it will deform a little bit. So that's that was a bad idea. So, um, but nevertheless, the problem what we have with this one is the cable here won't go deep enough into the console because the port yeah it's relatively deep in as you can see when we put this here the good portion deeper at our case so this millimeter of our bezel is too thick to get a good connection with the cable so what i've done is i basically just go over the design a bit I think it's just now a half millimeter thick 
and I removed the, the chamfer of the sides and I show you what it looked like. I let it cool down very well this time. Looks like this. You can see it's a slightly or a slight design change I've made. So with this same story compress fitted but yeah it's still it's still not flash but that's because it's it's bent in this case yeah I think it's easier in this case to remove some of this side a bit and this side that it's will fit better without any scrubbing so let's see if I can do this with some pliers it's of course not the perfect way, but I think you get the idea. It's just more a proof of concept. Okay, let's check. Yeah, that's much better. And yeah, now you can see it's it is flush. So the only thing left is to stick it down. First, let's try something. Let's boot up the power meter and check if it's working. Put it in and get a reading and you see the console is charging and we are pumping in yeah 152 milliamps so this is working now let's see is it still working or is it too thick when I put uh, some glue on it, I have those double-sided tapes here. Hopefully it's not too thick after this. Let's find out. Let's put it on. That is pretty good. Let's check if it's still doing its job. It is working, but it is a little bit tricky and not that secure. I mean, yeah, it works. But come on, it's just more proof of concept, as I told you. And it is working, so what I would change is our port needs to be a bit more to the outside to the case. Yeah, the gap is quite big. So and if we put a bezel on top, this will go on top of this. So if you want to try this by yourself, keep in mind that you should see the connector a little bit more, more to the outside. I think you are good to go.